integration using partial fraction. Please check. We said some cases in integration requires the use of partial fraction. Some cases include number one, where the degree of the numerator is equal to or greater than the degree of the denominator. We said in such cases, log division method should be used to break the term to simpler terms and then integrate through. Uh, before we solve problem on this, let me show you something. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, sample problem, perhaps. Sample problem, just uh, something to note. Just something to note. Look at this. If I have the integral, or let's say 1 all over x plus 5 dx. Let's say I have this. For this case, which method do I use here? I will use substitution. For this one here, we say let u be equal to x plus 5. Differentiating the u over the x is equal to differentiate x plus 5. x gives you 1. 5 constant gives you 0 is up. We said swap these two. So it means that the x is equal to the u over 1. Swap these two. The x equal to the u over 1. And that's equal to what? Eh? The u. Substituting. Substituting. I will have that the integral of 1 all over x plus 5 dx. This was my video, right? It's not. Integral of 1 over this man, number so is u. That's this. u dot dx is what there? The u. Question If I integrate 1 over u, what do I get there? Log u or what there? The u dot c. So this is now equal to the what u? x plus 5 plus c. So look at this. Here's the inference. If I have, if I have uh, integral 1 all over x plus k dx, if you give me what there, you mean what, what I have there, x plus k, that's what you have, of course, plus c. If I have the integral of 1 all over x, let's say what is not plus, what is minus, x minus k dx, this will give me what there, the x minus a, or perhaps a minus x. So please note this thing. Alright? Now listen. Listen. This works. This works if the x term here is linear. That means the pi is 1. That's when this condition works. So perhaps, if this man is perhaps 2, um, it may not really work. So notice that if I'm integrating this stuff here, such that this is a linear term, the power of x is 1 to give you lean of this. So please, not this stuff here. Um, okay, this will do. Um, in the same way, or perhaps, well, by logical extension, if I have something of this nature, 2 all over 3 minus x, integrate this the x. The idea is simple. I will move 2 outside the integral sign. Becomes 2 of what here? 1 over this. My answer becomes what there? 2 in 3 minus x. No has my box in this. So just observe this. Uh, one last one. Integral 7 all over 3 into x plus 8 dx. The task is simple. Take all constant terms outside. Gives you 7 over 3. Integral what? 1 all over x plus 8, right? Of, of. And so it gives you what that? 7 over 8 mean. Alright. So when I come here, I'll go to the answer. You know what I'm saying? Alright. Let's do an example.
evaluate the integral of 3x cubed all about x plus plus dx. That's also enough. Let's take an example on integration using a uh, partial fraction. So how do I know when I should use a partial fraction? I think I've explained my parts already. So you should not do that with them. Uh, let's look at using partial fraction. How do I know when to use partial fraction? Condition 1. We said if the degree of numerator is equal to or what there, greater than degree of what denominator, as in this case. If I look at this now, the degree of numerator is 3. The degree of denominator here is 1. 3 is greater than 1. So we said in this case, what do you do? We said use what there, long division method and break it down. So using long division, for this one we have now seen using long division method to simplify this term 3x cubed all over x plus 2. What do you get? So long division uh, back to 105 where you're doing this polynomial division. So 3x cubed. Yes, x plus 2. So how do you do this? First start, divide this by this. So if I divide 3x cubed, divide this by x. x here 1, x here, x squared. It gives you 3x squared. Divide 3x cubed by just x. It gives you 3x squared. Use 3x squared to multiply. 3x squared times x gives you 3x cubed. 3x squared times plus 2 gives you what x? Plus 6x squared. Work this out, of course, subtract. 3x cubed minus 3x cubed is 0. So this one will cancel this is off. In this one, I have 6x squared. If I look at this point here, there is no x squared there. So hence, the coefficient of x squared here is 0. It becomes 0 minus plus 6x squared. So 0 minus plus is minus. It becomes 0, nothing here, minus 6x squared. 0 minus 6x squared gives you minus 6x squared. Repeat the same process. Divide this by the first step. So it becomes minus 6x squared divided by x. Of course, this cancels this half of them, x. So this and this one there, minus 6x. So I'm adding minus 6x. Alright, use this again to multiply everything here. Minus times plus here is minus. 6x times x gives you 6x squared. Minus times plus is minus 6x times 2 gives you 12x. So I have this one here. So the idea is simple. Always multiply true. Okay? Divide first, then multiply true. That's the idea. And of course, subtract. So minus. I'm not in minus 6x squared. Minus minus 6x squared. Minus minus is plus. So minus 6x squared plus 6x squared gives you what there? Zero. It's up. Here I'm having minus 12x. There is no x term here, so it becomes zero. So it becomes zero minus minus 12x. Minus minus gives you plus. Zero plus 12x gives you 12x. So Next up, I'm still dividing again. Divide this by this. That becomes 12x divided by x. Divide this one by this. x cancels x is out. I'm left with 12. Alright. So it becomes plus 12. Alright. 12 times x gives you 12x plus times plus plus 12 times 2 
24, I have this. My next x, step, subtract, subtract, subtract. 12x minus 12x, 0 is up. There is no constant term. So the constant term gets added to the 0. It becomes 0 minus plus. Minus plus is minus. 0 minus 24 gives you minus 24. So I have this. So that means that, that means that, um, 3x cubed all over x plus 2 can be written as over half x, right? This is called quotient. Sorry? This is called, yeah, quotient. This is called remainder. Have it? Uh, the device of that. Remember how you arrange this? Quotient comes first, have it? So it gives you what that? 3x squared minus 6x plus 12. This one, next up, reminder all over divides up. becomes, what again, what have there? Minus 24 all over what I have there. x plus 2. So it gives you this. So this one first, this one next becomes minus 24 all over this one. So I have this. So what? So it means that. So hence, it means that the integral of 3x cubed all over x plus 2 is equal to the integral of 3x squared minus the integral of 6x plus the integral of 12 minus the integral of 24 all over x plus 2. So just pass the integral side. Of course, all of them with respect to the x, um, here is the x, here is the x, here is the x, here is the x, please, all of them with respect to x. This will now give you equal to, take constant outside and outside, gives you 3 into integral of x squared by x, plus minus, minus, take constant out, 6, integral of x, the x, Plus, take constant out, gives you 12, integral of the x minus, take constant out, 24, integral of the x, 1 all over x plus 2, yeah, so I have this. Alright, what this meant up? This is equal to 3. Work on this one, this is one there. x cubed all over 3. General method, add 1, and this stuff. Minus 6 into general method x into the pi has 1 1 plus 1, 2 all over 2 so for here now, I'm working on this thing general method concept uh, plus 12 if I integrate the x, this is what there? x because we said, integral cancel differential, this is x minus 24 into, integrate this one again there lean, have it? x plus 2, next up, plus 6, so I have this. I work on this one again. This cancels this. That's equal to x cubed minus, this cancels this, 3x squared plus 12x minus 24 mean x plus 2 plus, so this is how you solve this question. So this becomes the answer. Thank you.